Hey and welcome back. Today we're going to talk about the world's biggest army's air defense system. That's right, we're talking about America. But why are we talking about the American air defense? Well, of course, first of all, currently America has the largest army amongst countries. And besides, the design and systems which are being used by American air defense is unique in a way no other country has systems alike. And before I continue, just a reminder, subscribe to our channel if you like our content and hit the notification bell to stay tuned and updated. So, as you all know, most of American forces are spread worldwide. Plus, America was on the ballistic missile threat after the Cold War. And lately, Iran is upgrading and developing these missiles and including nuclear warhead in the progress, which is a serious threat to America. Plus, there's China and North Korea which keeps threatening the American shores with nuclear attacks. So having this long list of threats and enemies, America needs a special air defense structure. You'd be surprised how the world's greatest army has low air defense mechanisms on ground. Well, the question on your mind probably right now, is the world's greatest army this capable on low and mid-range air defense. Well, this isn't because of technical issues, you know. On the contrary, Americans give enough importance to their air defense. But they choose to solve the threat in the air first and ground defense system is the part B of the plan. In other words, Americans never set up ground unit in a area which they aren't controlling and securing by air. So before deploying ground unit, Air defense will be set up by US Air Force and US Navy. Just so you know, the world's second largest army is the US Navy. So let's start with the anti-air short range systems, shall we? Well, currently the counter rocket artillery mortar, known as CRAM. The CRAM system was originally designed to fill operational needs in Iraq to counteract the increasing number of casualties caused by attacks using rockets, artillery, and mortars. It was deployed by the United States in Iraq to protect the Green Zone and Camp Victory in Baghdad. CRAM can be used for defense and destruction against incoming weapons or can simply provide early warning. But hey, this system is used only in emergency occurs. I mean emergency emergency. Not even as plan B but as plan C. When other systems fail, this is the backup. Now, the awesome part. Since America started Project Tor, it have developed the electromagnetic and laser warfare tech. Awesome scientific movie stuff, right? Which the electromagnetic transmitter can transmit electromagnetic waves to the target and burn the target systems. This includes disarming missiles, bringing down drones, UAVs and so on. And if the target doesn't have a electromagnetic structure, the laser part is also capable of destroying the target. The system's power changes from 1000 to 10,000 kilowatts. This project is being upgraded with the cooperation of Israel. That was it for short ranges. Now for the missiles. Firstly, the game is famous and most known system Stinger. The Stinger provides air defense for light platoon size elements during missions and outside the wire activities. This capability allows the air defense at a tactical level, offering US and allied troops a way to defend themselves from aerial attacks while offering the mobility a light infantry unit needs to conduct its missions. Then of course we have the Avenger and Star Striker missiles. The Avenger air defense system is a vital element of the US Army's forward era air defense. The Avenger is a shoot on the move, completely automated, day and night capable short range air defense weapon. Avenger is manned by a gunner, who operates inside the firing station in between the two missile pods. The gunner uses a glass optical sight that displays missile seeker activate 
on cage and fire permit indications. Targets are required by using the optical sight or the rating, which is a laser finder and a video auto tracker. Having said this, let's not forget about the US Navy, which contains two main defense missile systems. The CRAM, anti-ship missile defense system, is a sea-based self-defense weapon that protects naval ships from supersonic and subsonic threats. These threats include cruise missiles, drones, and enemy aircraft, as well as small boats. The range of the CRAM is currently classified, but it is estimated to be similar to that of MK-31 rolling airframe missile, launching system at 9 km. The US Navy needed a better way to protect its four ballistic missile defense system, destroyers stationed in Mediterranean Sea. Since the ships are so focused upward on searching for missile threads, they become vulnerable themselves to cruise missiles and other incomings. Rather than station another ship nearby to protect BMD destroyer, Navy engineers realized they could install the CRAM anti-ship missile defense system on the ships to add a layer of protection. Also, as drone technology becomes increasingly available and deployed, CRAM has proven its capabilities to shoot down incoming drones, offering protection that is deployed around the globe and has mobility. Also, there is the RIM-7 Sea Sparrow, which is a short to medium range radar guided surface to air missile. It was deployed as a joint project by Raytheon and General Dynamics. Initially designed as an air-to-air -air missile by Sperry and the US Navy, the RIM-7 was modified and now serves as an air defense system for the US Navy. The RIM-7 has gone through multiple upgrades. The current version is RIM-7P, an upgraded version of the original RIM-7M, which provides better capabilities in an engaging low-flying aircraft and sea-skimming missile, such as cruise missiles. The RIM-7 defends US naval ships from such threats as enemy aircraft, high-speed, low-altitude cruise missiles, as well as standard aircraft missiles. This capability allows the US Navy to enter hostile territory where adversaries may be attempting to push an anti-access area denial A2AD strategy. Current actors engaging in an A2AD strategy are China in South China Sea and Russia in Baltic Sea. And there is a bigger sibling of CRAM, made for US Navy uses. The MK-15 Phalanx provides ship's protection against incoming missiles and aircraft. It is composed of 620mm gun barrels and fires up to a rate of 4,500 rounds per minute. The Phalanx is also equipped with its own search and tracking radar, which allows the system to work independently of their systems. And lastly, US has requested to buy two Iron Dome systems from Israel, which they will try to build an upgraded version of it. We just have to wait and see. Now, there is this interesting part. When we get to mid-range defense systems, there is a certain void. Maybe America doesn't give that part enough importance. But knowing they do, here is what I found. There used to be Hulk missiles for securing car ranges. But for some reason, you just don't use them anymore. Even after they upgraded it several times. Seems like they were made for selling purposes only. After selling this missile system to different countries, US stopped using them. Or maybe they built better ones, perhaps. There are no official mid-range defense systems deployed. But there are thousands of Patriots packed three missiles covering that area. Even so, we can't know really what's going on in their mid-range defense mechanism. Patriot Pack 3 program is an air defense guided missile system with long range medium to high altitude, all weather capabilities. It is designed to counter tactical ballistic missiles, cruise missiles, and advanced aircrafts. The last part of the high altitude air defense is the famous Tahad missile, which I love to explain the specifications widely and plainly, so I'm keeping that one for another video. 
So tell me what you think about the American air defenses. Plus, I hope you enjoyed the video. And don't forget to subscribe and share us with your friends. See you guys on the next video.